When you think of Rome, what comes to your mind? Among the many symbols of Rome, you may want to add these the obelisks. I know, I know, they originated in Egypt. The word obelisk comes from a Greek word which means nail or a pointed pillar. Pharaohs of ancient Egypt constructed them as a symbol of power, dedicating them to Amon Ra, the god of the sun. When Augustus conquered Egypt in 31 BC, he imported that same concept and physically started shipping the gigantic granite obelisks from Egypt to Rome. Here are the first two brought by Augustus. Following emperors continued the tradition by bringing more ancient Egyptian ones or ordering new ones themselves. As a result, the city of Rome has more obelisks than anywhere else in the world, including Egypt. However, after the fall of the empire, except for one, all of these ancient obelisks were in pieces buried deep into the soil of Rome. Starting from the 14th century, obelisks started appearing again. It was in 1586 when Pope Sixtus V and his architect Domenico Fontana decided to move just a few meters the Vatican obelisk. The only one which was still standing on its feet. It took them four months, 900 men, 75 horses to complete the job. They said Domenico had a plan B. He secretly prepared a horse so he could run away, just in case it didn't work. This event was the beginning of the rise of the Roman obelisks. The same pope raised other three obelisks. Other popes followed the example of Sixtus V, recovering ancient obelisks and setting them up on important Roman sites. So now you know why Rome is considered as the city of obelisks. In Rome, we have 13 ancient obelisks and other six modern ones. The Mussolini obelisk, made of Carrara marble. The Marconi obelisk, this one is dedicated to Guglielmo Marconi, the inventor of radio. These two belong to the Torlonia family. An 18th century copy of the ancient one which is now in Firenze. This one is by Arnaldo Pomodoro, same artist as this. You might recognize his style. His fairs are spread out worldwide. There are about 14 of them, and half of them are in the United States. Very quickly, let me show you the 13 ancient ones and where they stand. Here they are on a city map. Let's start with the one in the Vatican City, right in front of St. Peter's Church. It's the most photographed one for sure. Brought around 37 AD by Emperor Caligula to decorate the stadium which used to be here. Let's move towards the city center. In front of Palazzo Montecitorio, the Italian Parliament, stands one of the first obelisks to be brought to Rome by Augustus in year 10 BC. Right on this spot, Augustus has constructed an enormous solar calendar, a sundial, and used the obelisk as its gnomon. The other one brought together from Heliopolis was this, in Popolo Square. This 13th century BC obelisk used to decorate the Circus Maximus, where they used to organize chariot races. 
compared with the one in front of St. John in the Lateran. Now this is the tallest standing monolith obelisk in the world, over 32 meters. And it's nearly 3,500 years old. Can you believe it? Now let's move on to these much smaller obelisks. On top of the Criminal Hill, the most spectacular, in front of the presidential residence Palazzo Quirinale, composed with ancient statues of Dioscuri and an ancient basin. So very Roman. Here's another one at the Basilica of St. Mary Major. This one was paired with the previous one to decorate the mausoleum of Augustus. Today, finally, this monumental tomb is open to the public. Add it to your bucket list. The one in Navona Square was made for Emperor Domitian. This also used to decorate the stadium built by Maxentius in the 4th century. Then later transformed into this world-famous fountain by Gian Lorenzo Bernini in the 17th century. Here's another star obelisk on top of the Spanish steps. Painted and photographed by many over the centuries. It used to decorate an ancient Roman villa nearby. Five minute walk and you'll find this inside Villa Borghese, which used to stand in the center of a third century stadium. In between these two, there used to be another one but in 1788, it was moved to Firenze. Now we have a copy of it. Not far from the Colosseum in the quiet green gardens of the Salian Hill. There it is. In front of the Pantheon, brought to Rome from Heliopolis, Egypt by Domitian to decorate Iseum Campense, a temple dedicated to the Egyptian gods, which stood right next to the Pantheon. On the left-hand side of the Pantheon, there's another lovely one, standing on an elephant. One of the many projects of Bernini from 1600s. Now, it seems like I've covered them all. Oops, I've forgotten one. Which one? This one. And I'm going to put a spotlight on him today. Although positioned right next to the central station Termini, without doubt it's the most less known obelisk, forgotten even by the Romans. And here it is, the obelisk of Dogali. Now what's Dogali? That is, where is Dogali? Dogali is in Eritrea. In late 1800s, Italy was trying to expand its territory and started the colonization of Eritrea. Here in Dogali, on January 26, 1887, there was a battle between the Italians and the Ethiopians. 548 Italian soldiers fought against 7,000 Ethiopians and most of the Italians died losing the battle. This is Dogali today. As you can see, there's not much around, but they also have a monument to remember the same battle. Three months later, to commemorate the soldiers, they put an obelisk discovered a couple of years before the battle, right in front of the newly constructed Termini station. Imagine people making appointments at the obelisk. It used to be the first thing that you see coming out of the station. 
but the glory lasted only 38 years because in 1925 the fascist regime removed and repositioned it in this hidden corner. They weren't really proud to have lost the battle, I guess. The square in front of the station was named Piazza dei Cinquecento, the square of 500, honoring the nearly 500 dead soldiers. The Dogali, Navona, Celian, Minerva, and Pantheon obelisks have something in common. These five, together with probably other two or three obelisks, once used to decorate an area called Iseum Campense, the Temple of Egyptian Gods, which stood next to the Pantheon. And we've been discovering many statues and most of all obelisks from this area. first one to be discovered somewhere in the 14th century was the Salian Hill one. This one was discovered in 1373 and this in 1665. The Dogali Obelisk in 1883. If only he was found before. He also could have had a star position just like his brothers ancient Egyptian origin, adored during the Roman Empire, modern-day war hero with 430 names of the soldiers written, but now completely ignored by both visitors and locals. He's no postcard obelisk like the others, I know that. And yet, this Dogali obelisk represents the history of both Rome and Italy in a most complete way. Today, obelisks, ancient and modern, can be found all over the world. Russia, North and South Americas, even in Asia. Most of the ancient ones were donated from Egypt to these nations as gifts in 1800s. But the ones in Rome? No. They've been here for 2,000 years, and they've got whole different stories to tell. Here's a very unprofessional tip from a very professional tour guide. When you visit Rome, just follow the obelisks you'll cover most of the important sites. You don't even need a guide. And why not start off right from here, the Dogari Obelisk. He's waiting for you. Thank you for watching this video and hope to see you soon. Exactly when, I have no idea. So why not subscribe so you won't miss my next video.